please give it up for Danny Polish Chuck. Clap it up, clap it up. Yeah. How are we doing tonight? I just want I just want to say happy Women's History Month. Yeah, it's when you guys know that it's Women's History Month right now. You know that? March is Women's History Month. And a couple weeks ago, kind of weird, a couple weeks ago, it was International Women's Day. <laughs> Only women would need a day celebrating them in the month also celebrating them. <laughs> Fucking give them an inch and they're like, we want three more inches. I'm like, I can't do that. I <laughs> think I am. Nobody here is wearing a mask. See that? Uh, guess you guys don't care about my health. Whatever. No, I don't give a shit. I am so over COVID. It, it's my least favorite virus. Uh, I, I only know two: HIV and COVID. And then, depending on which day you catch me. New York. I live in New York. New York has one of my favorite things, though. It's, fuck, it makes me so happy every time I see it. People biking around the city, mask on, no helmet. It is <laughs> insane. I see it all the time, and every time I see it, I'm like, do you not understand how probabilities work <laughs> at all? Because I just saw you dodge a fucking shopping cart that someone pushed into the street and they're biking around being like, at least I'm not getting droplets in there. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. I guess they need people to know who they voted for while they're biking. I don't know. <laughs> explanation. They stopped in New York like uh, a few weeks ago. They stopped uh, making people show their vaccine cards to get in places. They got rid of that shit, yeah. It was weird, actually. I, I, like, I kind of liked it. I'm not gonna lie, I liked it just because I like knowing when I'm at a bar that everybody inside is vaccinated or has a working printer. You know, it's comforting. <laughs> it's very comforting. What a bad fucking system that is, huh? That's supposed to be the greatest country in the world to get vaccinated. Oh, here's a piece of paper. <laughs> what happens if I get caught in the rain? They're like, you're not vaccinated anymore. You're gonna wanna, <laughs> you're gonna wanna avoid moisture. I guess pretty much everybody's had COVID at this point. Who here, who here had it? Yeah. I feel it's like HPV. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't know. I probably had it. Uh, <laughs> those bumps or something. Not getting tested. <laughs> Anybody here have it bad? Who here had it the worst? I guess those people are dead. Who here had it? <laughs> it's a very serious disease. Uh, been following. Did anybody here have it bad? Yes. Did you? How bad was it? Who said yes? Okay, no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it's funny, I asked that question in Naples, Florida. I was in Naples, Florida, I asked that question. This guy puts his hand up, probably like my age, puts his hand up. He goes, yeah, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I had double pneumonia. I almost died. I was like, what do you think about the vaccine? He's like, I ain't taking that gay shit. That was his actual answer. That was his actual answer. I ain't taking that gay shit. He's dead now. Uh, he is dead now. He did not make it. I had COVID, I had COVID twice. I had it fucking twice. It was fine though. It wasn't that bad. I uh, I had it the first time. I had it in uh, like right when it, March of 2020. It was weird too. I lost my sense of smell. Did anybody have that? I couldn't. It was the weirdest thing. I couldn't smell. And the weirdest part was I didn't even know I couldn't smell until I was reading that people were losing their sense of smell. And I was like, oh shit, I can't smell. What? An expendable sense. Have I ever? Needed this? I don't. <laughs> I remember two things at the time. Like it is so weird. Just this, every, this how interconnected everything is on this planet. You know, where like someone in China ate a pangolin, 
And then a few weeks later, I can't smell? Like, what the fuck? Is that just me? Like, that'd be like if someone in New York ate a bad hot dog, and then everybody in China just can't stop shitting all of a sudden. Like, the whole country. Because everybody in China is just like, I can't stop shitting, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know, they're saying someone in New York ate a bad hot dog. They're looking into it, I don't know. Don't worry, it's only gonna be another two weeks or maybe seven years, nobody knows. Remember at first when it was a, a bat? Remember we were trying to figure this shit out and they go, someone ate a bat. It was like on, everybody on the news was just like, someone ate a bat. And then everybody in China was like, that's racist. We do not eat bats. They were like, okay, you guys ate a pangolin? They're like, much better. Thank you for clearing that up. It's not better. You ever see a pangolin? Looks like an armadillo fucked a rat. I think we were, I think we were doing you a favor with this bat thing. Also, not to sound xenophobic, but is every day fear factor there? What? I don't have to eat everything. I got the, I got the vaccine. Any vaccinated people here at all? You got it? <laughs> Fucking sheep. I, no, I'm kidding. I got it. I think it's good. I don't know. It depends who you ask. It depends on the day, too. It's like, is it good? It's like milk. It's like, is it good? I don't know. Uh, I, got, I got it because... So the reason I got it is because I wanted... I'm from Canada, and I wanted to go back to Canada. Yeah, and they wouldn't let me in without it. They go, you can't... You guys know Canada? We have the blackface guy. Um, <laughs> among other things. If you guys don't know, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, yeah... Blackface aficionado, he is. He's done it so many times that in the, the, the reporters in Canada, they asked them, because all these photos kept coming out, and they go, hey man, there's a lot of photos that you do in blackface. How many times have you actually done it? And his real answer, this is a quote, he said, look, if I give you a number and you find out it's higher than that, you're gonna call me a liar. Which is as bad of an answer as 20. I'm like, you don't have a ballpark? Can you just give us a rough idea? He couldn't, he doesn't know. It's, it's hard to remember, you know? But yeah, I went, back to, I went back to Canada. The main reason I wanted to go back, cause uh, so I wanted to visit, it was my grandmother's 95th birthday. She's a sweet lady. She's this 95 year old Russian Jewish lady. She's got the fucking best stories. Like does anybody here have any old immigrant people they ever get to hang out with? Do you? Yeah, it's the best, right? I'm telling you, if you don't have one, I highly suggest just go down to the old person pound and just sign one out. It's, just go grab one. It's like take a penny, leave a penny system. You just go drop one off, you pick one up. They're not keeping track. Nobody gives a shit. They're old, right? But she has amazing stories. She has, and she has a really dark sense of humor. It's really like off-putting even sometimes because she's so old. So here's the, here's the explanation. She survived uh, the Holocaust like the, the main one, and... Yeah, yeah, no, no, there's, there's been a bunch. There's been a bunch. They're just not white people, so nobody cares. But so she... She survived the good one, the one we all care about, and she says... She says, she's like, you know, dark humor really helped me get through such a dark time. In, in my life, you know? Like she has, it's pretty fucked up. She has one of those tattoos, you guys know? Like those number, you guys know what I'm talking about? Those number tattoos? She has one of those number tattoos. It's actually on her lower back. <laughs> I guess she was going through a phase at the time. <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor about it though, she does. She calls it her camp stamp. She showed it to me too, it's just the number 69. Yeah. Yeah. She, she got one of the early ones. First hundo, that's what she says. She's, she, she is cool. Please don't tell her I do these jokes. That's, uh... 
By the way, is it better or worse if I do that joke if I'm Jewish? I'm not. I'm just, what do you guys think? Uh, no, I am. It's all better now. Those are the rules. Those are the current rules of comedy. You're allowed to make fun of the stuff you are, right? So I got Jew, white guy. That's pretty much it. Uh, not much else. I guess, I guess I have a gender. Does that count? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of weird stuff going on with gender. A lot of weird shit. It's so weird that people right now are like, hey, can you go back to the Holocaust stuff? I have a job. I, uh, I don't need to be listening to this shit. My whole life, they were, there, was just, there was two genders. Two genders, tops, to be honest. And then you know, Max, too. And then they weren't just like, hey, there's like a third one now. They're like, hey, there's a, there's a lot more now. Like five years ago, hey, there's a ton more of these things. I was like, okay, you know, shit changes. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of questions. And they're like, yeah, no questions. Uh, we are not going to be taking questions. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not trying to be shitty or anything. I just actually have a question. Just because, again, my whole life you said there were two genders. And now you're saying there's infinity genders. Which is just, it's so many more than two. So I just ha I have some questions. They're like, cool, if you want to ask a question, then you're transphobic. So how's that sound? Okay, I guess I'll just incognito mode. <laughs> Search it. Someone actually called me transphobic once. I didn't even do anything. And she's like, Danny, you're transphobic. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, yes, you are. I'm like, look, I don't identify as being transphobic. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. She's like, that's transphobic. I'm like, I don't identify. These are your rules. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of weird shit. My favorite thing with the, in the world of gender right now is all the uh, transgender men who are dominating male sports. Just kidding, that'll never happen. Um, <laughs> never fucking happen. No, my favorite thing is actually from my great progressive homeland of Canada. So Canada right now has the world's first genderless baby. Yeah, they have the world's first gender. So you know, normally if you're a bigot, <laughs> right, if you're a bigot, you can pick on the birth certificate for a baby, an M or an F, but now they let you pick a U for unassigned just because I guess there's not enough room for TBA. I don't know, but I heard that. And I go, of all the progressive bullshit, I actually like that one. I like that. Because here's the thing. If you just go ahead, you assume your baby's gender when they're born, there's only a 99.7% chance you're going to be right. Why roll the dice like that? It seems risky to me, you know? Makes me think, though, what kind of toys do you give a genderless baby to play with. Just like a gray ball. <laughs> you know, just like, here, genderless baby, here's a gray ball. Just play with this for the next few years until you figure your shit out. <laughs> it's not a ball you could throw, by the way. It is not a ball you can throw. Just because that's what boys do, traditionally. No, it's just a gray 20 pound medicine ball. <laughs> And they can just kind of pointlessly push along the ground in a gender-neutral fashion. You just don't want to fuck their heads up, you know? All right, back to the Jew shit. Uh, any, any Jews here? Any Jews here at all? Identify yourselves! That normally works. See? Historically, that's been effective, and that's still, that's still an effective way to find them. It's, it's Pavlov's dog shit, honestly. You go, where are the Jews? And they go, what are you doing? What are you doing? No! <laughs> that was actually the one good thing about COVID for me is I couldn't go home and do all those stupid, back to Canada, do all the stupid Jew holidays because I hate them. They're the worst. My parents are like, hey, you want to come? Because it's, like, it's actually Passover in a couple weeks, right? My parents are like, can you come home for Passover during COVID? And I'm like, I can't. The border's closed. And they're like, oh, what about Zoom? You want to Zoom? I'm like, I don't have good internet in New York. Why don't we just circle back on this. We have... Jews have the worst holidays, okay? You Christian people, you have the best holidays. You have Christmas, 
You have one where Jesus turns into a rabbit. You have all these amazing holidays. <laughs> Incredible. The fuck do we have? We have Passover, it's a couple weeks, yeah. Look, so all these people are Jews, they're white. Okay, they're all fucking white people. We're white people, right? Passover is a bunch of white people. We get together every year to complain about being slaves. 5,000 years ago. We get together, we go, we were slaves never again. And I'm like, I think we're good. I, I mean, we are up next, but, uh, you know, maybe do this every other year. We have Hanukkah. That's, that's a good one. It's not. This is our big one, too. We think this is our best one, is Hanukkah. If you don't know the story of Hanukkah, this is the one we run up right with Christmas. If you don't know the story, this is the whole story, okay? There are these Jews, and they had this lamp, but they didn't have enough oil for their lamp. And then they found some. <laughs> but it was only enough for one day, but then it lasted for eight Days, which someone miscalculated how much oil there was. That's obvious. <laughs> like, that was the world's first Enron. That was the world's first big accounting scandal. That was, that was the one where people were like, what are these Jews up to? I don't trust them. What the shit? And we're like, it's a miracle. What an amazing, amazing miracle that is. Like, if that happened now, don't even know if you would notice. Like someone would be like, hey, see that oil over there? Is that, is that lasting longer than it should be? I don't know, it might be. You know, I think it is. You're like, all right. I, you wanna start a holiday? No, I don't wanna start a holiday around this. Just write down the name of the brand and we'll buy it next time. It's, it's $4 a gallon. It's insane. The worst part about Hanukkah, too, which is very embarrassing, because it took me a while to figure this out. So do you guys do this stuff with the, the gelt? You do that, right? So, so if you don't know, so parents, they give their Jew children these, like, on, on Hanukkah, because it's mostly for kids, right? They give their kids these gold coins, right? They're these gold coins. They're chocolate on the inside. Can you think of a more stereotypical thing than little Jewish children eating money for a holiday? Like, no one in the last fucking 50 years has been like, we should not do this. This is, this is not a good look. What a lack of self-awareness that is, huh? Because that's the thing, too. If you ask my mom, you're like, hey, where do all these stereotypes about Jews and money come from? She's so like, I have no idea. Now finish eating your coins. It's <laughs> fucking insane. Uh, did you guys, uh, did anybody here get the, um, the Amber Alert yesterday? It was fucked up. It was, it was happening because you know your, your phones are all locked up? And then everybody, everybody's phones at the club were all locked up and then they all started beeping at the same time. Which is fucking weird. Do you, do you know, did you see it too, by the way? They, they go, there's Amber Alert. The kid went missing. They go, he's been missing for a month. I thought this was kind of like a bang, bang thing here. What are you guys waiting for? The whole thing is fucking bizarre to the whole system. Because it's like, first off, it makes that horrible noise, right? Like it goes, ah, ah, which again, they just picked that noise. You cannot make that your fucking alarm clock if you need to get out of bed early, you know? You can't be like, I'm gonna, they don't let you do that. And I'm like, if you're just gonna pick something, pick something better than that, you know? Like, why not just like, help me, I've been abducted. Like, I feel like I really, if my phone made that noise, I'd be like, we should go. Let's go find this fucking kid. And again, it's just like that you get these weird messages, like the one yesterday where they're like, yeah, this kid went missing a month ago. I was in LA before the pandemic. I got one where they go, there's an eight-year-old boy missing a thousand miles away. That sucks. I don't... Did you text the police? Like, I, why are you texting me? I just replied back with a sad face. I didn't really know what to do. I go, I'm sorry. Good luck. The whole thing is bizarre because they don't give you a lot of info, right? Like, they don't, they just go, all I know is that the kid's like eight and far away. That's it. I don't know. Give you a license plate too, I guess. But 
They need to give you the one. They don't tell you the race of the kid, which I find so bizarre. I think they're worried that racists are going to kind of like co-opt it, you know, and ruin it. Like they're like, there's an eight-year-old Chinese boy missing. And some racist somewhere is just like, typical. <laughs> like, what? No, that's just what the kid looks like. They don't send you a picture of the kid, which I find odd. Just because, you know, that would help, right? Although, I got to say, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that just because I do not need pictures of missing kids saved on my phone. Uh, I don't need that shit. Because here's the thing. I fucking travel a lot, and I go to Canada. And when you come back into an America, if you're not American they're at the border, they're pretty fucking hard sometimes. They'll be like, yeah, give me your phone. I'm going to go through your phone. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, um, okay. Uh... All those missing kids on there, they're just sending them to me. I don't really know how to make that stop. I didn't sign up for that. I don't really, I don't really know. They need to give you some other kind of information. I don't know what. Just some sort of descriptive, just something that'll help. You know what they should do? Just, this would just be like a helpful little thing. They should just at least tell you the kid's rating out of 10. You know? Just imagine you get a text, they're like, there's an eight-year-old nine missing. That's a pretty good looking kid. <laughs> we should go look for that kid just because those nines, they do not last long. We use TikTok. <laughs> you know, or conversely, you get a text, you're like, there's a seven year old three missing. I'm like, I'm not getting out of bed for that shit. Fuck that. It's an ugly ass kid. <laughs> that kid's probably not even missing. He's probably just lost. Think about it. He's ugly. His parents are ugly. He's probably just hanging out in the woods. He'll be home by dinner. I know what you guys are thinking, that I'm a bad person, <laughs> which is accurate. Uh, I am. Here's the thing, I'm, I'm not a parent. I don't know how that could be more obvious uh, based on anything I've said so far. I'm not a parent, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of parents here tonight, so I'll, I'll ask you this. Why don't parents put, at this point in the game, why don't you put GPS chips in your kids? How much could that cost, like 50 bucks? Is your kid not worth $50 to you? People put them in cats. You know what your cat's worth? Like a dollar. <laughs> and I'm rounding up. Most people, you ask them, you go, hey, where'd you get, it's a nice cat, where'd you get your cat? It's like, found it in the garbage. <laughs> so yeah, because someone threw it out. That's why they say one man's trash is another man's cat. That's for a reason. Like a bunch of new cats. It's called a litter. They start as garbage. I, I got nothing against cats. They're just not particularly valuable. I don't know if this is a Canadian thing. I went to a pet store once, or I drove by a pet store. They had a sign up front of the pet store. It said, buy a bag of cat food, get a free cat. <laughs> what kind of fucking system is this? You go in there, you're like, yeah, just one bag of cat food. They're like, okay, this, uh, just so you know, this comes with a new cat. I'm like, I barely like the one I have. I don't want a second fucking cat. It's insane. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I, um, it's cool. I, I got in COVID. It was one of the cool things about COVID. I got uh, in a new relationship. That was all right. I got a new girlfriend. Don't worry, it's only temporary. I... Uh, <laughs> I just am terrible in relationships. I think I'm a little autistic is my problem. I have a mild autism. No, I'm autistic. I, I, don't, I don't know. I took a BuzzFeed quiz and they said I am. So that's what I'm basing that off of. They did say I am. They said I'm 3% autistic and 7% Ross from Friends. Um, are they wrong? I don't know. I'm not romantic. That's my problem. I am not a romantic guy at all. Any, any romantic guys here at all? No? You're, how, how you romantic? How you romantic? So you're like wearing a condom kind of thing? Or what do you do? <laughs> always, always romantic? I'm not. Man, every girlfriend I've ever had has, has complained about this. They say, Danny, you are not romantic. And I'm like, you know what? Why don't you find somebody else? And they always do. I don't know why I say that. I just, it's so easy to find somebody else now. It's just fucking log into a goddamn app. It's ridiculous. The only thing I can say about that that's at least a little good is that there's the scope of things you're allowed to do is really narrowing. 
as a man. You ever ask an old person how they met somebody? You're like, hey, Grandma, how'd you and Grandpa meet? You're like, well, it was after. The, and the moment that voice starts quivering, you're like, fuck, I wish I didn't ask this shit. <laughs> it's going to take forever. She's like, it was after the war ended. I was a cashier at a hardware store. And your grandfather came in and he asked me out on a date, but I said no, just because I didn't want to come off as a huge slut. And you're like, Grandma, he's... It's like, no, I did want to get my box filled that day, if I remember correctly. But so your grandfather came back the next day and he asked me out again, and I said no again. And then he just kept coming back and coming back and he just wore me down. And we've been together for 65 wonderful years. Like, you married your stalker. <laughs> and that shit used to be romantic. That legitimately used to be a romantic thing. Do you know what would happen right now? If you ask out a cashier, she says no, and then you come back the next day? <laughs> You understand? You are not going to be telling that story to your grandkids. You are going to be telling that story to a jury of your peers. You're like, Your Honor, I thought she was being coy. I realize I'm facing all this fucking jail time. This sucks. It's tough being a creepy dude. It is tough being a creepy guy right now. It is tough being a creepy guy. By the way, if you don't know what a creepy guy is, it's any guy under a six that talks to a woman. That's the current definition of a creepy guy. That is the current. So if you're under a six, get some money or you're going to die. I don't know. You're just, you're, you'll die and you won't reproduce 100%. So that's, that sucks. My friend, he told me he did the most romantic thing. I go, I could never do this shit. He asked his wife to marry him, okay? She comes home one day, and he made this path of rose petals from the front door to the bedroom. He's waiting in the bedroom on one knee to propose. By the way, there's a lot of women here, right? Women, do you just instinctively know to follow rose petal paths? Is that just something you are hardwired where you see a path of rose petals, and you're like, what's at the end of this shit? And you just kind of, you go, like, no matter what? Like, you're like a crow or something. You're just like... Like, guys, have you ever need to trap a woman? Because women, you trap men with babies. But guys, if you ever need to trap... If you ever need to trap a woman, right? It's different for, for men. You just fucking put down a bunch of rose petals and then just... And then you could probably take the box that they come in and just put a stick, you know, like set up one of those traps with the box and the stick. And you got to put something shiny in there. Women love shiny shit, right? It doesn't have to be valuable. Just has to catch, it could be like a fucking fishing lure. It just has to catch the light right. <laughs> My friend told me this. I go, I'm like, I could fucking never do that. Uh, the main reason I couldn't do that is because I'm such a piece of shit. I'd probably be putting down these fucking rose petals and then at the last minute, I'd be like, you know what? I should do something funny instead. And I'd put down all these rose petals and at the end of it, I'd just leave a vacuum waiting. And <laughs> I'd just be sitting in the corner and be like, that's funny, right? That's fucking funny. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go watch the game. Uh, clean that shit up. <laughs> um, I got I to gotta, I gotta get going here. Uh, in honor of uh, Women's History Month, I'm going to go uh, watch some reruns of the WNBA Finals. Yeah. Any WNBA fans here? No. Okay. <laughs> Bad people, a lot of bad people here. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't like the WNBA just because it's not good. It's not good, it's not good. You know what, maybe I'm a piece of shit. Everybody yell out the name of your favorite WNBA player. Not all at once, I don't want you yelling all over each other. I'll have to take your word for it, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know, nobody fucking knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I asked that, I was asked that question once. There was a guy sitting right where you're sitting. And he puts his hand up. He goes, you know what? He goes, I'm a sports reporter for USA Today. I used to cover the WNBA. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Can you name one player? He's like, no. Nah. Uh, no, I cannot. It's a high turnover league. 
I think it could be good. I'm not like I like women's sports. They just they need to make some changes to the WNBA. I think they need to do one or two things. First thing, I think they could do pretty easily, change the name of the league from the Women's National Basketball Association to the Lesbian National Basketball Association. If you know anything about the players in the league, it's not a lie, it's totally accurate. Just imagine, for the guys, you're flipping through the channels on a Sunday afternoon. The Lesbian National Basketball Association. Do I pay for this channel? I don't remember s signing up for this. How much, how much is this costing me? And then you turn it on, you're like, I hope I'm not paying for this shit. This is terrible. <laughs> this is what they actually need to do. Um, and when I say this, people get mad, and by people, I mean women. But they need, they need to lower the rim like a foot. I said this at a show once. This woman yelled out, she goes, fuck you. I'm like, oh, real WNBA purist, huh? <laughs> she had never seen a game in her life. She just took that as a personal attack. He's like, what, women aren't equal? Not at fucking basketball, they're not, no. Women are not equal at basketball. <laughs> Michelle Obama's got you ladies all fucked up. <laughs> thinking you can do anything, there's no goal too high. I'm like, that one is, that one <laughs> is specifically too high. <laughs> like objectively, it's too high for you. It's not even like a sexist thing, right? Like, we could just all agree, right? Women are smaller people, so just lower the rim a proportional amount, right? Like, they already play with a smaller ball because women have smaller hands, and also it goes in the hoop a little easier, doesn't it, sweetheart? <laughs> all right, that was a shitty thing for me to say, but I just want to see... I want to see a WNBA slam dunk competition. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, seeing your favorite player you can't name doing like a 360 through the legs dunk on a Fisher Price hoop. It'd be incredible, but it's fucking never gonna happen. Anyways, you guys have been great. Thanks very much. Have a lovely evening. I'm sorry. Good luck.